Here's a $450 Squire Strat, and here's a $1,500 American Pro 2 Strat. What's the difference, and why spend the extra money? We're going to take a close look at the difference in the features, the build, the feel, and the sound, and find out if it's worth it to spend over $1,000 more to buy a Made in Corona USA Fender guitar. The Fender Stratocaster is a guitar built from parts. Fender is the Ford Motor Company of musical instruments. The bolt-on neck design and the easy way parts are assembled allows Fender to build guitars efficiently and cost-effectively. So for a large part, the quality of a Fender guitar is the sum of its parts. Consequently, there are a lot of Fender-like guitars on the market that are made from generic parts or even Fender parts. You can even buy all the Fender parts and put together your own Fender guitar. So why spend more money on a US-made Fender Strat? Let's take a look at the built-in Indonesia Squire Classic Vibe 70 Stratocaster. First off, it's no secret that the Squire Classic Vibe series of guitars are some of the best bangs for your buck in the guitar market today. As soon as you pick up the guitar, you get the feeling that this is more than an affordable guitar. It's a good guitar. It may not be the best guitar you've ever played, but it's comparable to a lot more expensive guitars. So let's compare the bodies. The Squire body is made from a lightweight poplar wood. This particular strap body is especially light at 6 pounds 13 ounces. Poplar is a hardwood, but it's at the low end of the scale in hardness. It's similar in hardness to pine, which was also used on the early Telecasters and on the current Squire Telecaster. The body is routed out for humbucking pickups in the middle and the bridge position. I'm not sure if the neck position route is large enough for a humbucker, but it looks to be larger than a single coil. All the interior cutouts are covered with shielding paint. The finish is a polyurethane. Polyurethane is a strong hard finish and it's perfect for woods like poplar that need an extra level of protection and a durable finish. The color is Olympic white and the paint and gloss finish are beautifully done. The pick guard has a nice reddish brown color with plenty of light variations. The body on the American Pro is a traditional alder wood and it also has a poly finish. The weight on this guitar is 7 pounds 15 ounces. There's not a lot of difference between the Olympic white color on both guitars, but the American Pro has a more yellowed or slightly aged look to it. The main difference on the American Pro body is the sculpted or rounded neck heel, which allows for easier access to the higher frets. This was a feature previously only available on custom shop guitars, and it's a nice addition to the American Pro series. The body on the American Pro is alder, which is a denser and harder wood, and if you believe that the acoustic quality of the wood affects the resonance and sound of the guitar, hey, some people don't believe in tone woods. But if you do, and you're like me, this could be a contributing factor to your decision-making process. Now let's take a look at the neck on both guitars. The neck on the Squire Classic Vibe is a C-shaped neck. The neck feels slim top to bottom and slightly wider across the fretboard than I expected, which I like. The neck is made from maple and has a laurel fretboard with a 9.5 inch radius and a 1.6 inch bone nut. Laurel is usually not as interesting or rich in color as rosewood. It sometimes has a grayish appearance to it. In this case, the fretboard wood is a nice consistent dark color and looks very close to the rosewood neck. Even though the laurel fretboard looks similar to rosewood, there's more grain to the wood. The frets are finished nicely from the factory and the fret ends feel smooth with no snags or rough spots. At first I thought the frets were not finished smoothly because bending the notes seemed to be a bit scratchy or rough. But then I realized it was the texture of the grain of the laurel wood that gave it the feeling of roughness. I guess if you use some wood sealer and sandpaper, you could probably smooth it out some. The neck has 21 narrow tall frets and it has an upgraded bone nut. The neck is a gloss polyurethane with a vintage tint. I'm not a fan of the really white looking maple and I prefer the vintage or age look of the tinted finish. Some people don't like the gloss finish and say it feels sticky at times. Personally I have guitars with gloss poly necks and the gloss finish doesn't bother me. Also, if you want a more satin feel, you can just take some white sandpaper and take down the gloss. 
One obvious feature to the Squire 70s classic vibe is the wider headstock. The headstock look is just a cosmetic detail and it really is just personal preference. The American Pro neck is a deep C shape which has more roundness to the back of the contour. The neck shape is designed to support the palm of your hand better. It's slim at the nut and gradually fills out to the neck joint. It has a 1.685 inch bone nut which on paper makes the neck a little wider than the Squire. But I really don't feel that much of a difference. I don't have skinny fingers, in fact I might be the president of the Fat Fingers Club, so I do like a wider neck. It also has 22 narrow tall frets, so one more fret than the Squire. The 22nd fret allows you to bend the first string up to a high E for soloing. To get the 22nd fret, the fretboard hangs just slightly over the pickguard. The fretboard has a 9.5 inch radius and it's made of rosewood. On this guitar, the rosewood is a nice dark color and looks great. There's a lot more workmanship that goes into the American Pro Series neck than the Squire. And this is where some of the costs add up. The fret ends are smoothed really well and the sides of the fretboard are rolled and finished to a much finer level than the Squire. It takes a craftsman time to work the fret ends and the rosewood edge to get that nice played in feel. And this is some of the reason that you pay more for an American Pro. The back of the neck also has been worked to create a satin finish that feels silky smooth and very comfortable to play. All this contributes to a much more playable instrument and a more enjoyable playing experience. In my humble opinion, this is my favorite Fender neck. I think this neck is one of the best features of the American Pro Series. Now let's talk about the pickups and the electronics. The stock Squire Strat pickups are Alnico 5. It has a five-way switch and the middle pickup is reverse polarity for noise canceling in positions two and four. The controls are wired as master volume, tone one for the neck pickup and tone two for the middle and the bridge pickup. And there's foil under the pickguard for the switch and the pots, but it doesn't cover the entire pickguard. The pots and the wiring look clean, but the electronics are definitely not the same quality as the American Pro. They're alpha pots which are made in Korea and the switch is a lesser quality switch. Despite the lower quality electronics, the switch does feel solid and secure and the knobs are smooth and have a good travel. The audio taper is even and consistent with a good roll off between full on and off. The pickups are bright and crisp and the output is slightly hotter than the American Pro. Shift the decimal on the meter display. The range is incorrect. The output of the neck and the middle pickup are very close. 6.16 or 7 in the neck position, 6.17 in the middle position, and 6.19 in the bridge. One thing I don't like on the Squire is the bright white plastic knobs and pickup covers. I prefer the aged or slightly yellowed look of the covers and knobs on the American Pro, but these are inexpensive and easily replaced. There's no doubt that the electronics on the American Pro are a better quality. Even with the more complex wiring of the push-push knob, everything is well organized and neatly soldered. The body cavities are cut out for the option of adding humbuckers in the neck and the bridge position with shielding on the pick guard only. The pickups are the Custom Shop V-Mod 2 pickups. These are Tim Shaw designed pickups and they have a very detailed articulate sound. The resistance reading on the pickups are 6.33 for the bridge pickup, 6.12 for the middle, and 6.03 for the neck pickup. The pickup covers and knobs, as I mentioned, have a slightly aged look to them, which I think looks perfect on this guitar. The big difference in the electronics on the American Pro is the push selector on the lowest knob. The push-push knob adds the neck pickup to any position on the switch. So you could have the neck pickup and the bridge pickup for more of a telly sound. This is a great feature. If you'd like to hear some sound samples of both guitars, check out the link in the description. There's over 13 minutes of audio samples from both guitars, and I just didn't want to extend the length of this video any longer than it is. I think you'll be really surprised at the results. The hardware on the Squire is not as good as the American Pro and could definitely benefit from an upgrade. The bridge uses a vintage style tremolo bolted to the body with six screws. Some people feel that this system puts too much stress on the wood and could cause cracking. Others feel that the more positive contact of the bridge to the body transfers more sound. 
Some argue that this old style tremolo does not stand too well and is only designed for diving or loosening the strings down and not for stretching the strings up in pitch. Again, this comes down to personal preference. The bridge tension uses three springs and stays in tune as well as you could expect from a Strat tremolo. Let's face it, it's not a Floyd Rose. The tuners on the Squire Classic Vibe are vintage style tuners. You load the string through a hole in the top and then wrap it around the shaft. I like the look of the vintage style tuners. They work smoothly and I like the top loading system. The American Pro has the upgraded two-point tremolo bridge with what Fender says is a larger, heavier, cold rolled steel block. The additional heavier block increases the sustain according to Fender. Here's the tremolo bridge block and the Squire Classic Vibe. Look carefully at the holes in relationship to the thickness of the metal. Now take a look at the American Pro block. It appears to be a different part, but the American Pro looks like the same size. I can't tell any difference. Now take a look at the Fender replacement part made in Taiwan bridge that I purchased on Amazon. The Fender replacement bridge block is definitely bigger than both the other guitars. Why? I have no idea. I didn't take the bridges out of the guitars to compare the weight, but I'll bet there's not a whole lot of difference between them. The American Pro also has the upgraded staggered height tuners. This places the proper downward pressure to the strings at the nut. They work smoothly and I had no problems with staying in tune. Finally, the Squire does not include a case or a gig bag. Aside from the paperwork and a truss rod wrench, there's really no accessories. The Fender American Pro includes a $229 Fender ATA Deluxe Military Molded Case with TSA latches. Also included is the case candy with all the hang tags, authentication from Fender, and the truss rod and bridge wrenches. So here's my take on the comparison of the $1,500 Fender American Pro and the $450 Squire Classic Vibe. The Squire is no doubt a great bargain. Since price is usually the biggest factor in choosing any guitar, the Squire looks pretty appealing. But for me, I need to balance the cost and the quality and decide what works best for me. So the Squire is definitely more appealing for price alone. If I'm going to spend an additional $1,050 on what seems to be essentially the same Stratocaster guitar, it better be something special. So is the American Pro that special? First off, to make a fair comparison, you have to subtract the cost of the case. So if you take away the case, the cost of the American Pro is really $1,270 in round numbers. So now you're looking at an $821 difference between the two guitars. Now if you decide to upgrade the pickups to something like the V-Mod 2 pickups, then it's going to cost you a little more. And if you decide to upgrade some of the other parts and the electronics, that all starts adding up. So here's the breakdown. $550 for the American Pro Rosewood Neck, $200 for the V-Mod 2 pickups, $44 for the staggered tuners, $96 for the Fender American Pro Tremolo Bridge, $20 for the Fender Tortoiseshell Backplate, $17 for the aged white pickup covers, $10 for an F-Logo neck plate, $450 for some Fender aged knobs. There's more stuff, I'm sure I left something out, but that's $941.50 in upgrades and I'm not even counting the alder contoured heel body or the upgraded pots in the switch. If you want to buy the body and all the genuine Fender parts and assemble your own Fender American Pro Strat, it would cost you more than a Fender American Pro Strat. And it would be a parts caster and not have the same resale value. So really, both guitars are a good buy. I would say that if you're a pro and you want a pro level guitar for gigging or something you'll hang on to for a long time and maybe down the road get a good return on your investment, then the American Pro makes sense. Now if you don't have a lot of cash to spend and you want a good guitar that won't break the bank and you can customize it or upgrade it down the road, then the Squire makes a lot of sense. And you don't have to worry about gigging it and getting it knocked around some. Heck, all the wear and tear might make it more valuable. Hey, then it'll be a Squire Relic. I have to tell you that I own both guitars and I love both guitars. One thing about the Squire, it's especially rewarding when you can play an inexpensive guitar and make it sound amazing. You can definitely do that with a Squire. You don't really need to spend thousands of dollars on a guitar to play well and get a great sound. 
And if you do play a squire, you might just inspire some young musician that they can be great even on the $450 guitar that their mom bought them. My name is Brooks Reed. Thank you for watching. And don't forget there's a link in the description to watch part two of this video, which has over 13 minutes of audio samples from both guitars. I think you'll be really surprised at the pickup comparison. I know I was. Oh, and please check out my music on Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, SoundCloud, and everywhere music is streaming. And you can always find me on brooksreed.com.